Okay, we are ready to go. So we are going to go into the interview preparation phase. Uh, this is where we just look at the basics because uh, we already have different materials ready. You know, let's assume that you have gotten out some resume. You know that your good resume and good other materials where the hiring manager can find you either on GitHub, LinkedIn, Medium, or 10 Academy profile. Let's assume that everything really correlates and everything is consistent and everything is error free. Like you have nailed everything. You have nailed every keyword that are used by the professionals in your same field. And of course, your accomplishments on all application materials really speaks for themselves. And they get interested in you, you know, that's when they send you an email and be like, you know, would you like to, to catch up with us and talk further? We would like to learn on how you might be the best fit on how on probably if you're even the best fit for the position. So let's assume everything is correct and you have got an interview. Now, um, how do you get to convince the person on the other side of the table to hire you? How do you win the interview specifically? And that's what we are going to be looking at moving forward. First impression. Actually, when we are talking about the interview, let's hear first and foremost the first impression. Either if it, the interview is remote and it's online, or it's um, um, or it's physical, let's care about the first impression. And of course, we haven't talked about things like showing up on time, dressing professionally. If it's online, you already know that your camera is working. Like you have tested everything you have checked that your audio doesn't have an issue you are in a silent a kind of environment and there are no disturbance like let's assume that as professionals we already took care of that because why not we should be we should be getting ready for that and of course um yeah everything i think all of those things matters on whether you are going to be meeting physically or remotely. So let's assume that everything else is taken care of. Now the interview has just started. There is this research that I have been reading. It's written by a guy called um, Laszlo Bok. I think you have been seeing this name coming up in different careers manual sections. These are kind of former VP at Google. He's a very big guy now. I, I mean, he was a VP at Google in 2015, so you can imagine where he is now. And he wrote a book called Work Rules, where he gets to cover everything regarding work, starting like from the very first point of how do you even get to that job? How do you get work? So these are majority of the ideas here. They are his ideas from the research he conducted. And in that research, specifically on the interview perspective, he saw that many hiring managers can tell or can predict the outcome of the interview in just the first 10 seconds. First 10 seconds of you meeting him or meeting her. Just imagine one, two, three to 10. So the first 10 seconds, that's when they predict the kind of outcome they might receive the interview. In other words, most of what we think as interviewing is actually a pursuit of confirmation bias. But why do we say that? It's because he's shown this number that 99.4% of the time is spent trying to confirm whatever impression the interviewer formed in the first 10 seconds. If the first 10 seconds he saw you as a probable fit to the position, then he spends the rest of the time trying to confirm whether you are going to be the best fit as he is imagining. And also if he saw kind of a negative impression when you entered, when you first spoke, that's when he spends this rest of the amount of time trying to convince himself or herself right or wrong about you. 
if it's going to keep going being the negative um impression or if it's going to be kind of surprising turn into a positive impression so the first 10 seconds so what do we do in the first 10 seconds and this is like backstory of everything we are going to cover today we are going just to go into the main topic like right after this slide but let's talk about this first 10 seconds so that we always have this stuck in our minds all the time you should show up showing positivity you should smile like have a little smile on your face actually even to uh to unwind the kind of nervousness which is really common to all people who are looking for jobs but who who's not looking for jobs literally everyone in the corporate world we sit looking for other opportunities to grow either in our current company or in other companies so interview nervousness it's a common thing to every human being so when you show up showing positivity and smiling it does not only give you in, give them impression but also helps you uh, make yourself familiar to the environment even though you are new there number two have a quick icebreaker question which is the weather question you know i call it the weather question because it should be a quick icebreaker question like how i can ask you how are you to a stranger i do not expect that they might talk too much about how they are doing they would just be like oh i'm well how are you doing too but having another kind of icebreaker question to make yourself feel free like you are making it normal that it's an interview yes but you are making yourself feel at home so it's better if they do not ask any questions this is the kind of question i've received in the main previous interviews they just be asking oh how is rwanda how is the weather there if they do not ask anything you can initiate this question you know so if probably it's in the uk so how is uk now how is the how is the weather you know which season are you in now because for us we are not used to have those kind of spring and fall seasons like the europeans so asking that kind of question it makes even them um if they were coming tough on you they come a little bit down and see you just as a common person when you start with something normal and then number three show confidence like you should be paused you should be paused that's why being on time uh really helps like you do not have anything else running in your mind to and you are paused and you are confident especially when you are asking even those pre-interview questions like how is the weather and you answer it like someone who lives in your country you know someone who lives in your country is it raining is it sunny is it what do you like it do you not like it like give an interesting answer that shows the kind of level of confidence you are on and then number three yes show stability when you then go into answering any other kind of question they might bring show stability and be natural and don't be a seller don't be a seller trying to speak a lot of things um especially on these pre-questions you might bore them before the interview starts and they be like oh i cannot wait for this interview to end and you do not want to give that kind of impression so be natural in the very first 10 seconds positive ask a quick question and of course make sure that they see your confidence and your confidence is also always shown in the kind of smile you are giving uh yeah so let's not just be the toughest people like you know they ask you how you are and you be like i'm great how are you like let's not scare people uh let's be welcoming as we would imagine the best candidate coming to us you want them to be as friendly as possible so yeah first 10 seconds so let's get back to the preparation period where then we are preparing ourselves to enter that specific interview the number one thing predict the future also written by Bok, this article is uh, highlighted in the careers manual. So when you also get to read it, um, I believe it's going to be helping. 
So predict the future. Always, most of the time, we already know like top three, four, or four questions that you are going to be asked. You know, you probably know that they are going to be asking you, uh, tell me about yourself. They're going to be asking you, uh, what's your background, for instance? What kind of experience do you have? They are going to be asking you, why do you want this job? Or what a tough problem you have solved with the kind of knowledge you have now? Like most of the time, we already know these kind of questions. So ensure that you predict the future. What kind of role is this? Which company, like the company size, is it a very small company? Is it a bigger company? Uh, have you looked at other professionals on your same uh, on your same position? Most of the time, you will be joining the company as a data engineer, for instance, and you will find other data engineers there. So when you have researched and you see their LinkedIn accounts, those data other data engineers, and you'll be able to see probably what they have been posting that they are working on at the company, or you'll be able to see their experience. So you already know the kind of people they are looking for. So predict the future predict the kind of questions they are going to be asking you and ensure that you have your answers ready. And that's what we put in the plan your attack. Plan your attack. For every question, write down your answer. Actually, for the common questions, like tell me about yourself, you should be having a uniform answer that you will be telling to majority of the companies. Like, it doesn't have to change always. It doesn't have to change always but you just have your script always ready. I know it's really hard to actually write almost everything down. It's hard and frustrating, but trust me that the more you write something, the more it gets stuck in your mind. That's why people prepare their script way before. And of course, preparing a script, it doesn't mean that you will go through it like a movie actress. Like you have to say what you written. No, it's the script just helps you not forget the important parts of your answer. So always you want your answers to be automatic. You do not want to think about your answers during an interview. You do not want to be like, probably they ask you one of the biggest project or proudest project you ever worked on recently. And you start thinking like, um, um and you start using words like i think there is this project it shows that actually that project is not the proudest project you have worked on because you are not confident about it so always plan your attack be having your answers automatic like they should be reflecting automatically in your mind and number three always have a backup plan and this comes to when you have progressed, this comes most of the time when you have progressed to a second interview. For instance, for the first interview, you meet the hiring manager and they ask you about um, um, a certain story, like a situation question, you know, probably uh, tell us a time you faced different challenges, trying to visualize different data, for instance, that's a easy example you should be having different kind of answers you do not want to sound like a robot which always have like the same answers to each question like have different stories have different stories just in case uh you might share one challenge for instance and they be like oh okay that's interesting do you mind sharing another one have a backup plan have different stories to tell like two to three they are very enough it might be in the same interview it might be in the next interview with a technical person and they ask you the same question technical when when someone is coming to interview you on the second interview most of the time they should have read the report from the first interview and the report highlights the answers you gave in the first interview so they do not want to hear the same kind of thing ensure that you are telling something different so that they see that you have a diverse experience and number three prove yourself prove yourself 
this is where stories come in different interviews because uh, a written interview, a written like coding or timely challenges that you are given or assessments, of course they are there for you to write, but an interview, you want to have an interaction with them. So, and what's the best way of giving uh, an interaction? It's not by lecturing, like how now I'm just speaking myself or how you do it during to needed conversation. You can imagine when you are just yourself talking. And most of the time, to those who have run to needed conversation, our main target was how do we use this topic to tell our stories? What kind of stories from our very own life that reflects to this topic that I can share with people? Why? Because people relate with your stories and most of the time they won't forget that. So the story just from how you do your thing, learn how to talk about your project in kind of storytelling manner. So always, always tell a story, prove yourself. When you say you are good at this and that, then prove yourself, stories. And then number four, read a room, read a room, read a room, uh, look around who is present, um of course they have already introduced themselves are they very senior people or are they uh in most of interviews like on the second interview you get to be joined by someone who will be your manager and someone who is already in your team i mean that in kind of a medium company so majority of the time you are going to be meeting people in the two um in the second interview so ensure that you are you know the kind of people you are talking to and if they are being fun and cracking jo jokes find a way to fit in it's not just by laughing at their jokes only just find a random i don't know something just to speak about as well or an answer random answer to reply to their jokes like read the room or is it something that you saw if it was a physical interview, something that you saw at the entrance, something you are seeing in the office and it, it interests you? Probably something you are curious about their logo, probably it's hanged somewhere there. You know, uh, like some people who asked Arun on the very first day, what does 10 mean in the 10 Academy logo or even the name? So like, Ensure that you read the room and you have some, um, you, you can see different things around you and you know how to go around or how to even craft your stories according to the things you have there or how to engage with the people just according to who is in the room. But just read the room and ensure that you can feel that you are in the environment. Number six, most importantly, practice. On the Wall Street, they call these um uh the Carnegie Hall Carnegie Hall where uh, where most of the time um people be like how do you get to the Carnegie Hall like, I was going to show you how a Carnegie Hall looks like um but yeah it's the same thing it's just a term of uh, a kind of terminology um that people use when they say like it just takes you practice. It takes you practice. How do you get here? It takes you practice. So interviews requires practice. Practicing your answer, being familiar with the things that they will at 100% or high probability they will ask you about. It takes practice. So ensure that you, during the preparation period, you are doing these things predicting the future, knowing the kind of questions they might ask, plan your attack, ensure that you have your answers to each of the questions, have backup plan, have different stories to tell, different projects to, tell, to talk about. Prove yourself. If you say you are good at something, ensure that you prove how you are good at, some, at that specific thing. Read the room, know the kind of people you are in within the room, and the kind of people you are going to meet. Oh, this actually also applies to when you know the kind of person you are going to be meeting, 
which most of the time happen when you pass the first interview in the second interview they tell you the names of the person you are going to meet so if you are fortunate to know the kind of the name of the person or the people you are going to meet then please you can even look them up on their linkedin see the kind of people they are you know and then practice everything practice 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 so let's then look at uh when they talk about predicting the future like oh when you be like precisely on schedule like you expected this question to come second for instance or you expected them to ask this kind of question you know everything really gets so easy so by predicting the future these are some of the four questions that are likely to come you are going to be getting a lot of questions we will see a list of them or supplement questions to these questions here but these are like four that mostly comes within the interviews number one tell me about yourself and you shouldn't be taking more than two to three minutes as answering about yourself and number two how did you get to your current status as a machine learning or data engineer or web3 or gen ai then number three they might ask you to take me through a project that you are proud of project that you are proud of and then prepare the questions for the company so let's see how do we approach this kind of questions number one tell me about yourself you can answer it in this way or you can progress to even this way moving forward paragraph number one it's your intro and your why your why should be your value proposition this is where in your intro you talk about your full name uh, where you are currently based if you said it in the start of the uh you know when we're talking about the weather and they ask you like oh where are you best in rwanda for instance and they say it's in kigali they already know that you're in rwanda and you live in kigali you do not have to repeat the same thing when they ask you about yourself this is about when you write your script and you forget and you repeat it the same way you wrote it no say the kind of necessary things you haven't spoken about before and then uh, mention that you are this profession, you are machine learning engineer or data engineer or Web3 or Gen AI. And then that you want to take up this role and of course explain why. So the idea why you want to take up this role, why are you applying? This is where you mention your value proposition and your interest to the company, I mean, how your value proposition aligns with the kind of role they put out. You know, you say you have these qualifications. In the past, you have done this. Recently, you have been going through the, uh, the training that make you uh, qualify for gen AI roles. And you are interested in applying to this company because of their mission to do this and that. And you're excited about joining um, their team. So I'm not giving a script here, just giving you an example for to put here on the ideal one. This shouldn't be taking like 30 seconds, uh, the first three, not even 30 seconds, just like 20 seconds. So majority of your rest of the minutes should be here and then here. And then paragraph number two, uh, this is where you showcase, you actually showcase um, that you do know what you say that you know so here you have started talking about um your intro and then the value proposition here then you can go instead of just saying um instead of just saying i completed gen ai trainings at 10 academy then you can go into the oh i've started this journey like this and then the kind of university i covered and this is how I gained the kind of skills in this area, specifically, let's say it was software engineering. And then you got a passion for solving those problems using generative AI. And that's when you came to upskill yourself at 10 Academy. And then an overview, like the projects you worked on, titles, titles only. And then also what you are currently doing. You can say that you are currently self 
learning on a self-learning journey doing different other projects outside here and also looking for an opportunity so what's the difference with saying this to this is very quick very very quick it's like a tell me about yourself and this is when your interview is probably like 20 minutes yeah it actually shocked me in the previous days realizing that majority of the interviews are moving in the past they used to be one hour they moved to 45 minutes they moved to ideal 30 minutes which is like the common timing for majority of the interviews around the world and nowadays they have just moved to 20 minutes so when you know that on this schedule it's scheduled for 20 minutes you do not want to say all this you want to just say this if you see that it's paused for 45 minutes then they want to hear you elaborating so then you can add some thing about like let me take you through my journey i started like this went to university did some other courses uh for instance um uh to those who did aws somewhere or those who did software engineering in other technical companies for instance alx and then you came to upskill specifically on your track at 10 academy and now you feel very very ready to navigate world jobs and then you give the overview and what you are doing now. That's when you have enough time. So that's why we have two different paragraphs. So you choose what to talk about according to the nature of your interview. And then key here, you should tailor this to be very specific to the role you are applying for. If they are looking for someone who is specialized in, um, in a specific topic and you saw it on the job description from their post everything you say here should be coming define to you defining yourself as this person they are looking for here no any other unnecessary projects you worked on no any other unnecessary work experience talk about represent yourself as the person they are talking about here use the right keywords use emphasize like on this you should be defining yourself as the, this person this is very key so ensure you remember that and number two um on the second question how did you get to your current role as a jni ml ode or web3 so most of the time when they ask you this they want to hear about your background how did you start this journey? How did you start this journey? So when you say it here, when you took them through their, your journey before, they do not ask any other question around, like take me through your journey. But here we are assuming that you do not have time to talk about on the paragraph two, and you just only have time to talk about this. And so they progressed asking you this question. So what do you have to highlight? you have to start with your university which courses did you do that are relevant if you did something which is completely different then you just highlight the name and just talk about what it was about and then focus on where you have the biggest content of what they are looking for 10 academy aws alx anything you did else that is uh connected with you being into uh, with you fitting into that role if it matches with your university then talk about the coursework and then continue to everything as you did and then move on to 10 academy and highlight like two projects you worked on because when they asked you of course about um how did you get here they don't just want to you hi to highlight you should be providing like more value this is where you keep talking about the person they are looking for like i worked on these two projects or three projects and they were focusing on these and they completed them like this and that's how i came to qualify myself as a jni or ml or data engineer so yeah ensure that you align and you are specifically talking their language the person they are looking for 
and then move forward when you are talking about your work experience of course here you talked about your education so they understand you have the skill so you prof you continue to talk about your work experience is if it's relevant and if you do not have any work experience then of course you would spend your time talking about these projects and on this question also learn how to summarize we are going to see it in the challenge we are going to be learning how to be quick at talking about our projects because they were big so how do you summarize it when the question is not about the project how do you summarize what you want to talk about here we will see it in the challenge document so when you have the work experience talk about it highlight the key responsibilities and also what you were doing and the kind of achievement xyz formats and then talk about any self-learning uh, like if you do not have work experience as well this also applies to people who fulfill who check all the boxes like you have the work experience and the university everything like aligns for you it aligns it was tech so you have to talk about everything you have to talk about everything but just in case you do not have the work experience then you finish talking about this and you talk about what you are currently doing which is you are doing different self-learning or you are probably going to your master's school doing this and that and you got admitted somewhere like talk about what you are currently doing and then give a summary when you are done give them a summary uh because probably they forgot something but give them a, a summary of your background at the end and relate it with the person they are looking for again like you should be speaking the kind of language they want to hear yeah that's how uh, it got played, the interviews. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's proceed. And what's our key here? Be ready to talk about where you would take the project next if hired. Uh, I'm calling it the project, but where you would take their work if hired. When you are talking here about the summary of your background, and you want to relate it with the kind of person they are looking for, ensure that you tell them that with that background, with that, um, with that background of built and the kind of work experience I have so far and the current self-learning trainings I'm giving myself, I believe I can help your team this and that according to what's in in the job description i can help you do this and that progress with the current projects you are running so this is key be ready to talk about this and of course at the end uh, when you are giving the summary number three take me through a project that you are proud of especially when we are applying to junior roles like we are trying to enter into this field they might not ask you about the work experience. So they might not ask you about the work experience, but of course, if they get curious, they might ask you more about what you said on your, your work experience. But let's assume that we are all looking for junior roles. So most of the time they won't ask you about your work experience when it's not relevant or when you don't have it. So they will ask you about the project. Be ready to talk about it. You should actually be having these uh, written somewhere like it should be with you always just one project one project that you are really really proud of and then backup plans comes with other projects but always have one which you can proudly and confidently talk about without looking anywhere or with a presentation big time so you state the name what was the objective of the project the metrics used the process uh, to the end goal, any tools or platforms or anything you used, and then talk about the challenges first. There is no project without challenges um, because when you say that there were no challenges, they feel like you probably were not learning or probably those projects were too easy. I think we know it's on the technical perspective most of the time, there are so many challenges in the projects that we try to work on. 
like you find that you don't know something probably and you have to go upskill yourself on different youtube channels or i mean anything any challenge that you face do not sound just too too good to be true that's what i wanted to say and a challenge shows that you pass through this naturally and then talk about the end results what were the end results optional ask or volunteer to present your screen this is when you have already um crafted your presentation i actually suggest this to different projects that you worked on um yeah how about you have a presentation or you can oh i was going to say a presentation or you already have your 10 profile um uh, 10 academy profile that where your projects are highlighted you can take them to, to your G github and ensure that everything is easy to go through and everyone to understand so ensure that you go there specific specifically when this is a technical uh interview like it's the second or third interview just ensure that you go there but when it's with the hiring manager again with the question that nasrallah once asked about uh they do not have much knowledge about what you talk about so when they ask you this question they want to hear if you use the kind of keywords that they have on the list trust me they have always these hiring managers like very fast recruiters who meet you they just um have a clue of what gen ai people in their department are working on and they have notes received from different managers within the company especially like those in the same position as you or your managers or senior managers so they always have different notes so when you are talking they probably would not understand what you are talking about but they are checking the kind of keywords you use if it aligns with what they have on their papers they are checking the kind of language you use they are checking the kind of tools you, you said that you used and see if it aligns with the kind of tools that they expect you to be using once you get the job like they are just making a checklist so here you might not want to present your screen because if you present your github to someone who's not technical i mean they won't get what you are saying but you might ensure that you are focusing on the main keywords the main tools the main thing they highlighted within the job description so yeah, but if it's a technical one, volunteer or ask if you can share your screen and show them. That I'm pretty sure that we add some marks on you. And then number four, prepare the questions for the company. And what's the key here? This is your opportunity to showcase the type of thinker you are. And it also shows whether you have read about the company or not, about the company or not, Oh, actually, something else that we will uh, check on in the other upcoming weeks when we are preparing most of our interviews is getting to know the company. Yeah, majority of the recruiters, they start by um, they start by asking you like, oh, so tell me what do you know about 10 Academy? Oh, yeah, I was asked that question when I was joining 10 Academy too. So like, tell us about what you know about 10 Academy. So I already knew 10 Academy for so long and I already knew their mission, what they are trying to do. And I already knew um, the, the beneficiaries or the target market, which is young people around Africa. And I already knew one recent trend and uh i looked that on linkedin so like just looking on the recent posts what are they talking about yeah that was it and you have already got them you know the company you know their mission you know their market who are you going to serve because everyone in the department any department you are working for the company's clients and then you already know what's going on you got them you get them like whew, very fast so yeah this shows uh the kind of thinker you are it shows your knowledge about the company like you know so you should be able to ask meaningful question and think it in a way 
like the kind of question you would ask on day one when you get to join the company what kind of question would you ask actually this is getting us to be in the challenge so you we uh we will have to search that when we are doing the challenge so other complimentary questions that might come up they might ask you describe your experience with working in teams probably you're going to be working with diverse teams people from different countries so they want to understand did you ever work within teams of course we have been working in teams 10 academy previously at universities there was always group projects or group activities so you describe also one that is relevant to what they put out there in the job description or what or if it's not there then you focus on um um how was i going to say it you focus on how just a good team member or team leader should be looking like they can ask you about your experience leading a team you do not have to say that you do not have the experience like mm -mm, mm -mm, because everyone is looking for someone who has the qualities of a leader it, whether it was officially that you led a team or officially not you should be having an example to give here and then uh, and of course when you give out this example be ready i mean to any question you ask in any interview, not only to these questions, to any question they ask you, ensure that they might be bringing um, sub questions to that question. So ensure that you are confident about and confident and realistic about the answers you are giving. You do not want to say, yes, I've led a team, it was this and that. And they ask you, have you ever faced conflicts within your team? How did you solve it? <laughs> Please come back to the careers sessions we used to have about collaborative decision making conflict resolution everything about being a leader give an example from there give an example from there you do not want to say that you don't know anything so yeah then they might ask you describe your experience with remote work have you ever worked remotely this is learning remotely at 10 academy we are fortunate about that and the world is going remotely like to majority of the companies so yes, you have experience working remotely and you do not just answer yes to these kind of questions. You tell them where you worked remotely or studied remotely and give them like, oh, we were meeting using these kind of platforms or uh, with communication, we were using um, Slack. And when it comes to collaborative work, we were using some Google documents like you know, show them that you understand what they mean by this question. Just one minute answer, but clarify, proving that you, ha you have this kind of experience. Then tell us something that you are curious to learn about within your role. Yes, these are the kind of questions you should be having as someone within your, your specific, um, within your specific track or field you should be having this kind of thing. And it doesn't have to make you sound like uh, a student or someone who's starting or a junior. I believe it doesn't make you sound like that. You may say something simple. This is going to be my first role doing uh, data engineering as a profession, like first real work. So I'm excited to see how we solve real world problems. like real world problems that you're trying to solve so i'm excited just to learn about that you know uh yeah and that's something you are going to be learning from your team in your onboarding so describe then uh, or tell us about a project that you have led we talked about this tell us how you would manage a colleague that isn't doing the work that he is expected to deliver Again, going back to the careers, career readiness sessions we had in the past, you should be having answers to these. And then what is the approach to keeping your manager updated on your work progress? We saw this during different career sessions. So, and also what do you do outside work? This is one of the, um, it's a kind of a tricky question because you do not know what they expect. But when you make yourself interesting, 
when they answer you, that they ask you this kind of question i hope it doesn't take you longer to answer and you'll be like mm, what do i do you immediately sound like someone um who do not have any outside engagements and that is not interesting it's not interesting so you should be having something i have a friend i'm not sure if i told you about this who once said that he's he's a professional cooker and he mentioned it when they asked him this kind of question and then the interview turned from talking about everything he was applying for he's a software developer and he's into cyber security it turned from that topic to him being a chef and of course, do not say something bougie, like when you do not have much information, be honest and realistic about this. Do you play football? Do you, and do not say, oh, I like to hang out with just family. It doesn't show impact. Say something that is exciting. Is it a hobby? Is it community work? When I was checking the LinkedIn, I saw different people who own different startups. Uh, so that's a good thing to talk about. Like outside work, I volunteer to this specific area because I want to ensure that the world is better in this specific area. I saw some people who are into women empowerment. Very great thing to talk about. Say how you do it within your community. They see that you are a person of the world and you are interesting because even these companies, ma majority of the time, they sell stories of the employees um i'm not sure if you see it on different um on different websites of especially big people when they tell you like come with us and we show you a day in life of a googler for instance or a day in life of a microsoft data engineering team where they take you through that that's where they sell your kind of stories they be like um they talk about what they do and then they said aside from work i work on this and that something that makes you interesting and that makes the company show more value like it has people of value to the world so you should be having a story you should be having something that you might answer anytime you are asked this kind of question yeah and it should stresses you to why they should hire you like you should be interesting enough. Like my friend who said uh, they are a chef, everything turned into hotels. How do you really put your food together? Of course, as a professional chef, he wouldn't just go into recipes. He went into technical terms, like ensure that I'm preparing things that have a balance of proteins and carbohydrates. And you know, like you are teaching them something new so make sure that this adds value to you and any other kind of external question they might ask ensure that you are interesting enough and you are answering them passionately and naturally like this they should see that you really live that life outside work yep so let's have a look at the challenge interviews are very very exciting very exciting even when you don't get a job, I believe it's kind of an experience you get. Yeah, really. And also getting to talk about yourself. Super amazing. So we have our, the interview preparation um, challenge. Deadline is Friday 22nd. So you are going to be taking, I believe, like majority of your Friday working on this because it's going to be a little bit challenging i i guess so let's start in preparation for every single interview in addition to your materials being solid every trainee should prepare to answer the following four interview questions and it's the ones we saw in the tutorial section tutorial session Number one, tell me about yourself. Number two, how did you get to, the, to your current role? And number three, take me through a project that you are proud of. Then number four, three, four, three to four questions that you will ask the company. That is it. 
and when we are talking about ourselves let's ensure that we focus on paragraph one only because paragraph two have things we would answer here and this question is already asked so let's focus on paragraph one only so what's the task you are going to refer to the job description we have here why is it not hyperlinked let me hyperlink it it's the same job description we used on the cover letters so of course yeah i will hyperlink it let's not take time now then in regards to the job description in your respective track you are going to prepare a script of your answers for each of the questions above which is this, these four questions and uh, write it in a doc a word document and then convert it to pdf and submit it on thanks this is just a script if you are asked by that specific company tell me about yourself what would you answer we need a script and number two you are going to record a video of yourself answering all the questions before i go into the instructions the question number one should be of two to three minutes maximum then question number two should be four minutes maximum question number three should be seven minutes maximum because you are taking them through a project so it might be seven minutes maximum and then question number four should be one minute because you are just highlighting the questions you will ask them and this means that your video should be 15 minutes maximum and why do we always target this because um let's assume that your interview is going to be 30 minutes then you speak for 15 minutes and ensure that the other 15 minutes is for them to ask any curious curious question you know so that's why you should be limiting the amount of time you take while answering you give them time to speak too so your video should be 15 minutes maximum let's ensure we respect this you can do as more practice as you can before starting to record yourself or uh, you can even take so many recalls and have the final one which is complete but ensure that you are on point with the 15 minutes and that you have followed do not take some of the minutes here and put them here no on the tell me about yourself it should be this to be honest it should be not more than three minutes and then on the second question four minutes let much of the time be on your selling point which is on the project and then number four it's just one minute just the questions that is it so let's look into how are we going to be recording this use zoom app to record let me log in quickly to show you why did i remove here okay i'm here um oh before i proceed can i have some thumbs up that we are, are still together i haven't checked on you in a while okay thank you so much everyone so you log into your zoom account this is my zoom account your basic plan always have 40 minutes like the free one you always have 40 minutes um so you are going to be having your free 15 minutes to record so when you log in this is how it's going to be looking like you come here at hosts and then you click uh to host with your video on and then open zoom Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing and then share my window so that you can see my Zoom. Okay. So here we are in my zoom you have to be having your video on and you have to be turning on um this to be unmuting yourself so let me remove my video for now 
but you should be having your video on and then when you come to record you have to come here and then click recording record in progress. you should be recording with your video so i will have to unmute myself but to avoid echo let me mute here again so your recording is currently in progress and why did we pick zoom is because we have this pause recording option stopped. other than any other platform most of the platforms i know they do not have a pause option like when you are done with the first question and you want to move to the second question uh and you feel like you are not confident about what, how you are going to be navigating your second question then you can pause just for a few seconds and then you click Recording again to progress. resume so everything is going to be coming back complete then when you are Recording done again stop. pause again if you want to any pause and then click here Recording again in progress and then ensure Recording that you are stop. done then you click here when you are done they you you immediately receive a notification i don't know if you can see it i believe you didn't see it but they tell you that your recording will be um, transformed, converted. Yeah, it will be converted to MP4 when the session is done. And what do we mean by the session is done? It's when you end the meeting for everyone. So when you meet, end the meeting for everyone, let me share my screen again. Please follow the steps so that you do not lose your um you do not lose your recording and you have to go in again what am i sharing one okay let me sh oh. okay it's all right i couldn't see anyhow i was going to be checking that but yeah you zoom record pause and when you are done follow the instructions let it convert first you do not want to lose your recording and go through it again let it convert to mp4 first and when it's converted you are going to see its location within your any kind of folder when where it will go and then make sure that then you upload it to your drive Upload it to your drive. Let me go back to the challenge document. All steps are there. Please, again, remember to follow the recording instructions. We hope nobody loses their recording or ends up. Oh, yeah. We hope nobody loses their recording. Then, when you are done, upload the video on your drive and then add the link to your video in your script document. This document we will add a title where where it is your your recording you know your answers recording and then put a link in this document and then remember to share us access to view the video yeah that is it so it's just a script and your answers to these four questions in respective to the job descriptions we used when we were writing cover letters I'm going to hyperlink the link here again. Yeah, that is it. And yeah, let's ensure that we all use Zoom. Uh, it's easy to navigate. It doesn't take time. You can use it with, if you have the app, you can use it uh, on the platform, on their platform, just like that. Like it's easy to use, easy to use. So yeah, that is it. I can see. We have a comment, Alexander, great option. Yeah, Zoom is a great option, really. So if there is no any other question, um, then that is it. That is it. For some tips on how to answer those questions, you can even educate yourself on, uh, we have different steps and guidance within the careers manual. So check this section here or go again through the tutorial or look to different um, YouTube channels, videos or Google or anything and see the best way to answer those questions and then 
take practice and then record your video, make it natural. When you have your script ready, everything flows smoothly. So prepare your script first. Do your research, prepare your script, and then record. Practice before recording again. Yeah, that is it. Deadline is on Friday. Okay, if everything is cool, then some reactions and then we check out. Okay, thank you so much. This is going to be fun. Uh, let's embrace not being so comfortable because, yeah, but we are ready to nail this. I'm confident about everything. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. See you shortly in CBS.